بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما مثل الحياة الدنيا كما إن أنزلناه من السماء فاختلت به نبات الأرض فاختلت به نبات الأرض مما يأكل الناس والأنعام حتى إذا أخذت الأرض زخرفها وزينت وظن أهلها أنهم قادرون عليها أتاها أمرنا ليلا أو نهارا فجعلناها حصيدا كأن لم كذلك نفصل الآيات لقوم يتفكرون وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والله ما مثل الدنيا في الآخرة إلا مثل ما يجعل أحدكم إسبعه في اليم فلينظر بما يرجع أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام After beginning in the name of Allah the most merciful and the compassionate and after praising and thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings we acknowledge and for those who fall upon us indiscriminately and infinitely upon us we praise and we thank him we thank him for all of those that fall upon us and all the creation and we acknowledge they come from him alone and then we send peace and salutations and salawat upon the best of creation the imam of all the prophets the seal of all the prophets the beloved of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we ask Allah to extend these peace and salutations upon his Sahaba, his companions, upon his Al, his family, and upon all those who choose to follow them until the last day. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Jum'ah gives us moments to quickly reflect and take something for the remaining week. As we begin the khutbah series, the new series will be on Raqaiq. Raqaiq are chapters within hadith literature. And they are chapters within books about self-betterment which talk about topics which soften the heart. Which soften the heart. And when the heart becomes soft, it becomes flexible. It becomes or is granted the ability to absorb. For the hard earth, the burnt and scorched earth, when it rains, it creates floodplains. For the water is unable to be absorbed. We are told by our municipality councils that we have big issues for we have slabbed and concreted down all the areas in our cities so when it rains we have flash floods but when we listen to the ahadith and the verses of the holy quran where allah gives examples metaphors and parables about the akhirah the life of the hereafter about the reality of this world then our heart softens and the scholars have collected these in various places and books so over the next, inshallah, six weeks, we will be going through the raqaiq. Many of them, which inshallah will be beneficial for us and give us an insight on the reality of where we stand, who we are, and where we are going. I begin with the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, narrated by Imam Muslim. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I swear by Allah, I swear by Allah, I take qasam, wallahi. Now, we shouldn't take us customs too often. Yes, I know I used to work in a school and the mashallah young people with every sentence in the beginning and the end, they say wallahi, 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 wallahi. And we don't take the word wallahi or say qasam so easily. We should be careful with this. It's the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is only taken when there is a very important point to be made. So the messenger of Allah said, by Allah, I swear that the example or the likeness of this world in comparison to the hereafter is that of any one of you dipping his finger into the sea dipping his finger into the sea let him see what he brings forth let him see what he brings forth the comparison of this life to the hereafter is the comparison of the oceans and you dipping your finger and taking it out and seeing what is there but Allah spoke about this in the verse that I brought at the beginning of the khutbah. Allah says the life of this world that me and you are living is just like rain. This life 
is just like rain we send down from the sky, producing a mixture of plants which human beings and animals consume. Then just as the earth looks its best, perfectly beautified, and its people think that they have control over it, our city is adorned, our buildings are built, our city plans have been incorporated. We see the trees, we see the skyscrapers, we see the trams, we see the roads, and we see all the planning being implemented and executed. What does the Quran say? And its people think they have full control over it. There comes to it our command. There comes to it our command by night or by day. So we mow it down as if it never flourished yesterday. This is how we make the signs clear for the people who reflect. This is how we make the signs clear for the people who reflect. For us came many civilizations before us. The Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, the Sassanid Empire, the Egyptians and their infrastructure and what they made and what will came before us and what will come after us. They have peaks and they have highs and technology goes to whatever levels. Architecture goes to whatever levels. Engineering goes to whatever levels it may be and it comes to its peak. It comes to its beautification, the Paris and the Rome and the Madrid, the Washington DC and the great cities of the world, whatever they may be. This is a sunnah of Allah that has come before and will happen. But then Allah says and his decree comes and what happens? They are mowed down, whether it is by an event, whether it is by the punishment of Allah. This is the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the reality of our life, the example of us. Where we are, what is our life, my brothers and sisters? What is our life? We need to ask the question. The green vegetation, flowers and fruit that we see, so many of us are smiling and happy now. We had four days of sun, Allahu Akbar. These are the official four days of sunshine that we have had. I know why, because since Eid, we have been trying to plan an Eid party at our madrasa. And at every week, me and the staff, we study the weather for the week. And we're like, nope, not this week, send a text out. Nope, not this week, second week. Nope, not this week, the third. In the fourth week yesterday, we were able to do the Eid party for our madrasa students. So we are aware, alhamdulillah, the trees and the buds and the fresh green leaves that have appeared. In two months, those leaves will lose the light in the leaf and they'll become dark by the pollution and their age will make them look dark. But if you see the fresh bloods, buds now, how beautiful they are. The cherry blossom on the trees. The flowers that we see appearing, the blue sky has reappeared and the clouds have cleared. This is the life that we see, a magnificent hobby that we have. A house of cards. Have you seen a house of cards that a person will make? They will spend months and months in creating some structure. A house of cards. In a supermarket, they lay items and products in a way that it becomes very, very big. What is our life? A mega structure. We go to the beach. We get excited, we get our sand buckets and we begin to create some magnificent structure out of sand and we dig and we place and we dig and we place and something magnificent is erected. We may think it's magnificent. Or when the winter comes, we create the giant snowman. I'm not going to say if it's halal or haram, yeah? People give fatwas, is it halal to make mufti sitting over there? You can ask him at the end. But they create a snowman, they roll the ball, they get the snow, they make an effort, four or five hours sweating in the snow, and they erect a snowman, or they create an igloo. What is the reality of life? Allah says in the verse, Ataha amruna laylan o naharan fajalnaha hasidan kan lambil ams. This is how we make, and our command comes by night or by day. So we mow it and we finish it down as if it never flourished yesterday, as if it never existed yesterday. For the green vegetation, just in three or four months, the leaves will start falling and the green vegetation will disappear and the dead leaves and the rotten fruit will be, fruit will be placed upon to the floor. What will happen? The magnificent house of cards, the products that were lined up in a magnificent shape in the superstores, one lady one brother comes with his son baby son and they push the trolley and it all goes tumbling down and the beautiful sand castle six foot seven foot whatever you could created 
the, the, the coastline and the shore comes in and the waves take it away in the matter of moments. The igloo, the snow, whatever it may be, we created. We wake up in the morning and the rays of the sun come and it has totally disappeared as if it never existed yesterday. My brothers and sisters, this is life. We are fearful of getting old, for we will get to a stage where we become green and beautiful and flourish. Our hair is jet black. Our muscles are strong. Our belly is flat. We, mashallah, not have a wrinkle anywhere on our body. And then what happens? The decline begins. This is the reality of life. Do not fear it. Do not fear it, subhanallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after this verse, I read to you the verse of Surah Yunus. And I read to you verse number 24. But the verse after us, after reminding us of the shortness of this dunya, after rem reminding us of the temporary stages that me and you will continuously go through, from being a child, becoming an infant, becoming a teenager, going into our early adolescence and adulthood, going through middle ages, becoming an old man, and then becoming a total old man close to passing away. These are the stages that we have. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us hope. Because it's not just about this life. Allah says in the following verse, Wallahu yad'u ila daris salam wa yahdi man yasha'u ila siratin mustaqim. When Allah mentioned the swiftness of the world and its termination, He invited people to paradise and encouraged them to seek it. He called it the abode of peace. Jannah is called Darus Salam. My East African brothers will say it's the capital of Tanzania. The scholars have conversations about whether a capital or a place could be called Darus Salam because there is only one house of peace and that house of peace is Jannah given the, the name by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the abode of peace because it is free from defects and miseries. The house of peace because it is free from defects and miseries and this world is filled with defects and miseries. Defects and miseries. A child is born. And what happens? The colic begins. Soon as the child is born, defects and miseries. And soon as the colic goes, oh gosh, the teeth start coming out. And then the bongella cream and the teething takes place. And then as soon as that happens, the child starts walking. And it falls down and hurts itself. Then it learns to ride a bike. And Allah Musta'an, may Allah help us. What happens after that? And then we go through puberty. And then we get older. And then problem after problem. Toothache. This tooth is coming out this tooth needs to be removed this problem has occurred go to the doctor physiotherapy these are the defects and the miseries of this life this world is not darus salam this world is the dar of imtihan of tests and trials my brothers and sisters and we have to remember this and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and ibn kathir he gives a parable but before then there is a beautiful narration by yahya ibn mu'ad has given has given some man-to-man -man advice to whomsoever it may reach. He said, O son of Adam, O son of Adam, Allah Almighty invited you to Darus Salam, the house of peace. When you will respond to this divine call, when you will you return the message? When will you RSVP? When will you accept this invitation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Understand and be happy. Pay attention to this. Understand and be happy that if you have started making efforts to say yes to this invitation from your Lord while you are still here in this world, you will succeed, you will reach the home of peace. If you have begun the prep to accept that invitation and move towards Darus Salam, you are going towards your checkpoint. Darus Salam, you receive the invitation and you begin to move towards the destination of the invitation. Then he said, you, are, you will reach home and you will reach peace. Our home is where, my brothers and sisters? Our home, my brothers and sisters, is Jannah. Jannah is our home. We came from Jannah. Our father Adam came from Jannah. And our home is Jannah. Home sweet home is not the one you return to. Home sweet home is the one that we came from. Where our father was created and where our souls will ever live. And then he said, Yahya ibn Mu'ad, he said, And if you wasted your years of your life here, then landed in your grave, and then thought of following this call, responding to this call, you will be stopped. You will not move there, not even one step, because the place where you are in this grave is no longer the place of performing good deeds, my brothers and sisters. 
So you heard the call of Allah in page after page to move towards your destination. How do we respond? Allahu Akbar. There's a parable given by Ibn Kathir in his tafsir narrated by Ibn Jarir. He says, the parable of you and your ummah to the Prophet Sallallahu the parable of you, O Muhammad, and your ummah is that of a king who owns a land. And on that land, he built a house. And he made you a messenger. And he created in that house a banquet, a grand feast. And then he sent a messenger to invite people to the food. Some accept the invitation and others did not. This is the parable of a man who owns a vast land. He has a house on that vast land and he has a banquet in there and he sends his servant he sends his messenger out to go and invite people to come and eat from this banquet Malik. so let it be known that allah is that king and that owner what darul islam and that house and that house is what sorry and that land is what that land is islam وَالْبَيْتُ Jannah, And that house on that land is Jannah. Ya Muhammad, wa anta ya Muhammad Rasul, and you, O Muhammad, are the Prophet. فَمَنْ أَجَابَكَ دَخَلَ الْإِسْلَامِ The one who responded to your call and invitation entered Islam. وَمَنْ دَخَلَ الْإِسْلَامِ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ And the one who entered Islam will enter Jannah, will enter that house. وَمَنْ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ أَكَلَ مِنْهَا And the one who enters Jannah will eat from that banquet. So the invitation has arrived. It dropped at your door. It falls upon you every day. When you hear the Adhan, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala al-falah. Allah is greater, Allah is greater. Allah is greater, Allah is greater. This is falling upon us every single day. The invitation from Allah is coming to us. And He told us the temporary nature. The temporary nature of this dunya. And that temporary nature is the drop of water that we have on our finger. We remind and I end with this hadith that when we dip our finger in the seven seas of this world, the Mediterranean, the Indian, the Atlantic Oceans, the Pacific Oceans, when we dip our finger into the 75% of the water that covers this planet and we take it out, what do you see? You will either see wetness on your finger, dampness on your finger, or you will see a drop of liquid on your finger. That drop of liquid, my brothers, and sisters is not the dunya of me that is the dunya of every single human being this is the world for every single human being this is the comparison of the dunya to the akhirah so meager so small so little that we make every effort for this little drop and we forget the vastness of the akhirah we forget the vastness of the akhirah and we sell the vastness of the akhirah the greatness of the akhirah for what for a few desires for chilling out at night, for consuming something, for a little buzz. We disconnect ourselves from our mother and our father. We disrespect people and we destroy all of this akhirah that we have, the entire ocean that we have for a little bit of dampness on our finger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to understand and comprehend. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us iman, faith and belief in Him. One which will take us back to him and one which will make practicing our faith easy. Jazakumullah khairan. Nafa'ani Allah wa iyaakum bi hadhi kitabihi wa sunnati nabihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim al-jalila wa lakum wa likafid al-muslimin min kulli dhamb. Fa astaghfiruhi innahu huwa al-ghafurur rahim.